Good morning. My name is Nikos Diakos. I'm an interventional and heart failure cardiologist. And today, my presentation is about management of cardiogenic shock, the present and the future. Cardiogenic shock is a condition that the heart cannot provide adequate blood flow to the rest of the body in order to maintain appropriate end organ function. Objectively, in the prior studies, cardiogenic shock has been defined as systolic blood pressure less than 90 for more than 30 minutes, a cardiac index less than 2.2, elevated pulmonary capillary wedge pressures, and markers of end organ perfusion. The epidemiology of cardiogenic shock is evolving, and we know that acute MIs are decreasing. However, acute MI remains the leading cause for cardiogenic cause, uh, shock. Other causes for cardiogenic shock is acute and chronic heart failure exacerbation in the setting of ischemic or non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. This graphical representation shows the evolution of cardiogenic shock mortality over the past five decades. While the overall mortality has significantly improved, currently remains 30 to 40 percent, suggesting that we have to do more things in order to improve our outcomes. In the following slides, I will present you the current data on the management of cardiogenic shock, and I will be dividing the therapeutic interventions in four categories. For each category, I will be providing you the supporting evidence as well as the impact of each category on cardiogenic shock mortality. Starting with the role of revascularization. This was the first intervention that was shown to improve survival in the shock trial of 1999. Later on, in 2017, there was another randomized trial that showed that revascularizing the culprit region in a patient presenting with acute MI cardiogenic shock had superior outcomes compared to multivessel revascularization. And here, you see in our graphical representation of the mortality that moving from the red to the yellow bar, there's a reduction in mortality when we introduce revascularization in patients with cardiogenic shock. Moving on to medical therapy, this includes vasopressors and inotropes. The question is, which is the best vasopressor that we can use in cardiogenic shock? And there was a study that compared epinephrine with norepinephrine and showed that epinephrine-treated patients have worse hemodynamic and metabolic profile and higher incidence of refractory shock compared to norepinephrine-treated patients. In addition to this study, uh, there is the SHOP2 trial that showed that patients who received norepinephrine had better outcomes compared to patients receiving dopamine, especially the cardiogenic shock subgroup. This data suggests that norepinephrine is a preferred vasopressor for patients uh, presenting with cardiogenic shock. On the other hand, there was no observed difference between the use of milrinone and dobutamine in patients uh, presenting with cardiogenic shock. Moving to the acute mechanical circulatory support, there are different devices that we can use for patients presenting with cardiogenic shock. There are the intracorporeal devices, such as intraortic balloon pump and impella CP, and the extracorporeal devices, such as the tandem heart and the VA ECMO. Intraortic balloon pump provides pulsatile flow, while the other three devices provide continuous flow. Contrary to the revascularization that provides a clear-cut improvement in cardiogenic shock outcomes, the introduction of acute mechanical circulatory support has not had the same results. You see from the intraortic balloon pump SOC2 trial, when we compared intraortic balloon pump to the control patients, there was no significant improvement in the outcomes. We then, in subsequent trials, we have compared <coughs> the use of Impella25 to two balloon pump and the use of Tandem Heart to intraortic balloon pump, and both those devices did not have uh, better outcomes compared to balloon pump. This is reflected in this uh, uh, longitudinal mortality graph. Uh, you can see the um, yellow bar, there is a plateau, which means that we did not have any improvement in the survival with the introduction of acute mechanical circulatory support compared to the revascularization era. Finally, an important recent development in the management of the cardiogenic shock population is the introduction of the team-based approach in the management of cardiogenic shock. A team managing cardiogenic shock is a multidisciplinary team that has a heart failure cardiologist, a cardiac intensivist, an interventional cardiologist, and a cardiothoracic surgeon.
The team evaluates the patient and assesses the need for medications or mechanical circulatory support uh, to uh, treat the patients presenting with cardiogenic shock. And when we compared uh, the data from uh, uh, the survival, when we compared the survival uh, of cardiogenic shock in patients that were treated by uh, a shock team versus those that they were not treating a shock team, you see that those treated with a shock team, uh, they do better. And these are data from the University of Utah, and these data were uh, confirmed by other groups, uh, including the Inova Heart and Vascular Institute. And this is how the introduction of uh, shock team uh, impacts uh, the mortality uh, in patients with cardiogenic shock. You will see the green bar, there is a reduction compared to the yellow bar, which means that lately, after the introduction of the shock teams, we do have an improvement in our outcomes. Here at Baylor St. Luke's, we have adapted uh, the multidisciplinary uh, shock team model for the treatment of cardiogenic shock. When we do have a patient that uh, we have suspicion for cardiogenic shock, the shock team is activated. The team evaluates the patient, orders more testing, or interprets the already existing testing, including invasive hemodynamics and echocardiographic data, and decides uh, the appropriate level of care and the appropriate level of support that the patient needs um, for uh, management of cardiogenic shock. In 2022, American Heart Association introduced a, an algorithm for the treatment of cardiogenic shock. Similar algorithms we're using here at Baylor and Lux to decide uh, the treatment that we will use for the patient presented with shock. The cardiogenic shock team initially evaluates the patient and decides whether inotropic support plus minus intraaortic balloon pump is necessary. The patient is being continuously evaluated and if uh, the shock is refractory to the aforementioned interventions, then the team uh, evaluates the hemodynamics and the echocardiographic data to assess whether the patient has isolated left-sided shock, isolated right-sided ventricular shock, or biventricular shock. We use markers such as PAPI, R rate, wedge pressure, uh, CPO index, and then based on our assessment, if the patient has left ventricular shock, we will upgrade to Impella CP or 5.5 devices. We can also use uh, um, uh, tandem hearts or ECMOS in selected patients. If the patient has right ventricular shock, Impella um, RP uh, or uh, VA ECMO is another option. Uh, we can also use Protect Duo devices. If the patient has biventricular shock, VA ECMO or Bipella uh, is the go-to way to manage those patients. Despite the progress that we have uh, in the management of cardiogenic shock, there are still many unanswered questions. For example, what is the role of invasive hemodynamics in this population? What is the role of circulatory support? Is there a, low, uh, a role in supporting um, AMI patients with ECMO? Are there any adjuvant pharmacologic therapies? Can we predict recovery from cardiogenic shock? And are there any winning protocols that we can apply to safely win devices in patients with cardiogenic shock? In the future, uh, there will be many trials coming out to answer those questions. One of those is the PACCS trial that will evaluate the use of uh, Swan catheter early, within 24 hours, versus later on, within 40, uh, after 48 hours. And the primary endpoint will be in hospital mortality. There are also three trials that are uh, currently enrolling and will be evaluating the role of ECMO in the patients presented with acute MI shock. There are also trials, uh, such as the DANGER trial, evaluating the role of transvalvular devices in AMI shock. And there's also the reverse trial that will be evaluating the role of LV venting in patients presented uh, with uh, a cardiogenic shock requiring ECMO support. Finally, I would like uh, to bring up our uh, trial, uh, the Texas Heart Institute approach uh, for clinical and molecular phenotype of cardiogenic shock. Our goal is to prospectively evaluate and serially evaluate patients that are being supported by a percutaneous divide for cardiogenic shock. We will be doing uh, echocardiographic, hemodynamic evaluation, as well as serial blood samples. And then we will be incorporating hemodynamic, echocardiographic, and molecular data to be able to identify predictors of recovery from cardiogenic shock, as well as therapeutic targets that will help us improve our outcomes. In summary, mortality from cardiogenic shock remains as high as 40%. The revascularization of the culprit region remains the gold standard for AMI shock. Norepinephrine is the vasopressor of choice in patients presenting with uh, cardiogenic shock. 
And the role of acute mechanical circulatory support is currently under investigation with randomized studies coming up. The team-based approach definitely improves outcomes. And studies that are promising to do clinical and molecular phenotype of patients with cardiogenic shock can establish prediction models and can introduce novel adjuvant therapies to improve our outcomes. Thank you for your attention.